Welcome back everyone for another time based build designed for Endgame in Mind. Today's build is taking a look at the exotic stronghold and lament setup that has been making the rounds with allowing teams to solo players take on all types of endgame content with ease. The following two combo allow you to retain high damage and soak up damage with ease to the point of never losing your health if timed right. But one question I have for you all is have you tried the following setup since Solo 3.0 was released? With restoration and damage fragments, you can survive near anything without worrying of dying so quickly. It sounds unreasonable for me to ask, but this is a build I would recommend you take note of if you ever want to solo dungeons. If you're like me and want to break out the shell and challenge yourself more, then this setup is really great for you to test out. But you know what else isn't unreasonable? This channel right here. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like, a sub, and turn on notifications for more stuff like this in the future, as it goes a long way for me. Starting up with the subclass, we'll be using Burning Maul for its faster super regen and ability to cause fire pillars to occur which can stun bosses and make it easier for us to use our swords without damage nearby. Using Stronghold and Lament has always been a thing to use for solo endgame content since the day they were released. The following setup now extends on what we are already aware of but allows us to use and abuse the healing factor for our high peak damage phase with little interruption. As you'll see, the strength of the build will rely on the user keeping the health regen going as long as possible, which for many isn't too hard. So for aspects, we have Raw Flames, where getting solo ability kills increases the damage of our solo abilities. Our Uncharged Midi will also apply Scorch and solo damage as well. We then have Soul Invictus, where solo super or Scorch targets defeat will produce a Sunspot, which will then give increased ability regen and our super draining slower. It will also apply Scorch and Restoration to the user. For Fragments, you'll want Ember of Tortures where melee hits will make you and others radiant, Ember of Searing where defeating Scorch targets grant melee energy back, Ember of Imperium which allows us to extend the duration of Restoration and Radiant via solo weapons or ability kills, and Ember of Solus where Radiant and Restoration effects are increased. For Stats, you'll want 90 to 100 Resilience, 60 to 80 Recovery, and 60 in Discipline. Like most Titan builds, your main focus is to get your resilience up for the damage reduction and faster class ability regen while everything else will be simply covered by the subclass and mods supporting them. Now, key mods to have here are Mini Wallmaker for creating worlds via Mini, Wall of Life for passive health regen once elemental worlds are collected, Battle of the World for times 2 worlds created, Luke and Blade for a 35% sword damage buff for 6 seconds and also increased charge rate and Classy Restoration where activating our class ability will give us restoration. So just like the lowly user build, we'll be relying on just 3 things, Sunspots, World of Life and Classy Restoration, and all of these will be used to allow us to get up close and personal to bosses or mini bosses with little fear and damage. I went with this setup so to make sure that if one area fails then you can rely on the next method and so forth. Although very strong, it can be situational depending on the area, boss and combatants you face and this can change how effective the sword build can be if there's no way of getting active restoration going. This here should fix our problem and allow you to swing away with glee. For weapons, it won't matter too much as to what you use as this will vary from content to content. My selection is more for quick cleanups and matching different scenarios. For example, the Deliverance Fusion Rifle with Cornered and Chill Clip is good if you want to quickly take out rank and file to mini bosses quickly or just want to slow them down. Just like Riptide, you can use this to counter a large group of combatants in one go and then apply your melee so you can get that sunspots going. It's fantastic at giving you ample room to breathe and it's also great against bosses as well, so don't sleep on Chill Clip. When doing Night Force, I would then swap it out for the Submission Submachine Gun if I need a quick pull up weapon or use Servant Lead if dealing with Unstoppables. A secondary at the Callus Mini tool with Unrelenting and Incandescent, a exotic tier weapon and combo that can help with clearing areas out quickly when you need it most, and with the following setup this can help with allowing you to weaken others and get them set up to use your melee on. I have found that the weapon is very effective for the running gun type playstyle which we have, and since it fires and kills so fast, you can keep for example your Radiant or Restoration buff going for longer. The only downside to my current role is that it reloads quite slow, but it's still usable. End game though, I would probably swap it out for the Statico 46 which is a solo weapon and can also get Incandescent or the Pointed Inquiry if I want a scout with adaptive munitions and not worry so much about what element is being used. 
For Heavy, we have the Laman Exotic Sword, which to be honest doesn't need a lot of explanation as to why you should use it. The sword will give you the highest damage output compared to other swords, and it has a 100 guard efficiency, which when combined with Stronghold, can allow you to absorb damage on a large scale. This will be the main weapon of choice, and how you'll be able to solo take on bosses with little help. For the stats, we want to make sure we have our resilience at 190, as we plan to use our battle case a lot to activate classy restoration. As this is a titan heavy build, you don't need to worry about needing to invest in additional mods to increase your class ability regen, as naturally this can be achieved through high invested armor alone. This means that you can free this area up largely by using other mods that you may wish to use. One thing to keep in note though, is that if you plan to get high resilience based armor, do make sure you collect a few with additional stats invested, so you don't feel short on your discipline or intellect for example. You never want to have one stat to feel superior against everything else, unless you can avoid it. Plus in Resilience's case, having the stat maxed out means you can have a 40% damage reduction, which is huge for end game. The rest of the stats now are there for keeping our survival rates up, and don't have a lot of perks or mod design for keeping them going. What I mean is, unlike Elemental Worlds focus builds, I don't have much items being used that will link heavily back into the stats. I take my discipline at 50. This is left like this as I want to use my grenades every now and then, and then may also use healing grenades as well if needed. The same is for strength which is at 30, but this will be used a lot since we'll be creating worlds via it, and getting well of life active. You'll see this a lot in the video where I use my hammer to activate it, and since it's the phone hammer, as long as I collect it afterwards I can reuse it again, and thus not need to worry about heavily investing into that alone. I do have Invigoration and Harmonic Siphon as backup though, in case I do lose it, but this does show that not a lot of investment is needed to make this simple build work. Intellect lastly is at 70, and although having a super is great and all, this isn't going to be worth much since the majority of damage has come through weapons alone. So leftover wise we have Sword Scavenger mod for getting more Sword Ammo Reserves, and that's really it. Right, so let's compile everything into one, into a nice tidy list for your easy viewing. For head we have resilience, harmonic siphon times two and melee well maker mod. Arm we have recovery, fast ball and well of life mod. Chest we have recovery, armor the dying sun, concussive dampener and powerful well mod. Leg we have minor resilience, sword scavenger, invigoration and luke and blade mod. Mark we have minor strength, classy restoration and taken charge mod. So covering the basis of what we already know. Using the Laman and Stronghold together can allow you to absorb near any type of damage with ease, and using Radiant plus Luke and Blade damage boosts can allow you to further chew through good balance health within a few swings. In terms of seeing what the build is like, I tested that out in the Duality Dungeon on the first encounter, since that's the most easiest way to test the build out in a small area. From testing, I've noted that the damage distance and health regen plot can allow you to survive against the wave of good balance and science with ease, as long as they don't back you up into a small area or corner. I've also noted the room is quite small, which means that we can keep our buffs going as the combatants will most likely continue to spawn and thus keep ourselves alive. When it comes down to the damage, I was limited to how much I could do, and the time it given was short and also because I've now learned that you can get a full near minute by doing the phase a different way. Anyways, damage being done was relatively high with raiding allowing me to constantly refresh the damage boost I got, and utilizing the harmonic cipher mod can also help us out further. If things got bad, that I could simply block and even when damage again through, it's still quite low and not much to worry about. Through the run, it showed me that we can in practice become near unkillable as long as the environment is right, and if the timer wasn't there, I could see myself doing around half the boss's health alone, or even the full boss's health there. When I used this in a team, we got it done within two phases, which is extraordinary alone, and could have done in one phase if possible. This seems to be the same motion with other bosses I face when tanking damage and going ham is easy to achieve and safe for anyone who wants to try it out. Now only downside I've noticed is that some combatants can bypass your shield by simply hitting you with a very heavy attack or launching you away from them. That's the only core issue with the build I've noticed, but it's easy to avoid as long as you read the room. In short, the build is highly recommended for solo players who wish to do solo dungeons without fear. High damage and high health allows users to play a safe playstyle without the worry of needing to take cover much, and this should overall improve the gameplay of others who enjoy challenging content. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. 
But once again, thanks for stopping by. Stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one.